I'm a little bummed right now, guys. This time yesterday, I was planning on picking up a YZ80. Not just this time yesterday, like an hour ago, I was planning on picking up a YZ80. We've got the two other bikes in the back. I was gonna meet Erica and the kids at the track. This was gonna be a really good bike. It was gonna be like a family bike. I could ride it, Luke could ride it. Technically, he could race it in the 85 class. Lillian could ride it. We could see how she does on a two-stroke. But unfortunately, when you're dealing with people online, sometimes they're a little flaky, sometimes they're a little shady. And this guy, I came to pick it up and he wanted to jack the price up on me. Sure, I could have paid another couple hundred bucks, but I was like, no, I don't think so. So now we're on our way to the track and Lillian doesn't have a bike. So I'm gonna stop and see if I can grab something else real quick. A few minutes later. I feel better now, guys. I feel better about this purchase. I just paid $1,100 for a dirt bike. He was asking 12, I talked him down to 11. And I just, I get that feeling like, crap, is this a good idea? Am I gonna regret this? But he actually just told me that he's had about six other people call him in the last hour uh, wanting to come get it right away. So that made me feel a little bit better. Worst case scenario, we ride it for a day, turn around and sell it tomorrow for the same price or maybe make a hundred bucks or something on it. So I'm not too worried at this point, but check it out guys, here's what we got. 2005 DRZ 125 in great shape. Everything looks really good well taken care of except for the rear tire but not a big problem there okay we're running late the track closes in like three hours and uh everything's in lockdown this is this could be the last day or maybe tomorrow could be the last day that the track's open so we're kind of in a hurry to get out there so i didn't really have a lot of time to get footage or, or vlog or anything but here's what's going on so this bike is going to be for lillian i think we're going to sell the ssr why are we gonna do that? A couple of things. Coronavirus, there is no races going on right now. There's no point for us to have the pit bike because I'm not gonna do any pit bike races. Lillian's not gonna race it. She's not ready anyways. She needs a lot more practice. So that's a good reason to sell it. The second reason, she wasn't really that comfortable on it. The suspension is way too stiff. The bars are too high. She's only 100 pounds. The suspension is way too stiff for her. We could make it work. We could get new bars. We could get a softer suspension. I looked into it. It would be a couple hundred dollars, four, five hundred dollars to get a new suspension. That's like half of what we pay for the bike. So we might as well just sell it, right? Reason number three, she can't start the bike. And this is a knock on her. She's a strong kid, trust me. She's solid, she's muscle, she's tough as nails. But it's almost impossible for her to start. It's really hard for me to start too. The bike just has a lot of compression. And I have done my time. I've been a moto dad, I've done that already. I've ran around a track picking up bikes and starting them for kids. I don't wanna do it anymore. Lillian, I got you another dirt bike. It's a Suzuki. Do you like it? I like how when I tell my kids I just got them another dirt bike, they're like, okay. Like, you would think I just told them that I just bought milk. Oh, okay. Are you kidding me? It seriously wasn't raining at all, all day. And then we just got here five minutes ago. Well, I guess uh, that's that. We decided we're not gonna ride today. We're just gonna hold off and come back tomorrow. The kids were totally understanding. They didn't freak out or throw a temper tantrum or anything, especially Mason. Hi, are you sure? So for us, it'll be a long wait until we come back tomorrow. But for you, it'll just take a short generic YouTube transition. And we are back here at Woodland. The weather is better. The track's still pretty wet though. The boys are lining up for their first practice session. Lillian is not here. She's getting her hair cut, but she may show up a little bit later. But we're super grateful for Woodland. Uh, they're staying open, giving the kids something to do right now during the coronavirus. And they said that the sheriff told them that they could stay open as long as there's only 50 riders here. So if you come, you want to get here early. You want to be one of the first 50 riders so that you can get on the track. We think Mason's bike is going to be running better now. Fingers crossed. This is his first time riding it. So I'll find out for sure when he gets done. But I'll tell you what happened to the bike a little bit later. It's kind of embarrassing.
die. Back to you out. Well, I don't know guys, I just kicked the thing for like probably a hundred times. Just nothing. And then it starts. I'm starting to lean more and more towards just putting them on a 65. Uh, I should have probably just got them an electric 50. <laughs> That was sick. Uh, I think that might be a thumbnail right there. This is gonna be hashtag Whip It Wednesday. It's actually Thursday, but Luke's preparing for next week. Here we go. Whip it good. Woo! Brilliant. Let's see your hair. Oh, nice. You look all grown up like a gym teacher or something. This one is a little bit more tricky because neutral is in between first and second gear. What? So what you do is you push down to go into first and then up into second, okay? Sounds fun, right? How fast is it? How fast is it? It's not very fast. How does that feel? Fine. Does it feel more comfortable than the other bike? Yeah. Make sure to keep your boots clean, okay? Okay, Lillian. Uh, the track's gonna be really muddy in spots. Just do the best you can. Here he comes, here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. Go speed racer, go speed racer, go speed racer, go! Yeah! Huh? I'm going so slow. I've been laughed by the same people five times. Okay, good job, Lillian. You didn't fall, right? No, because I didn't jump anything. That's true, but this time I want you to work on standing up. So go ahead and get on the bike, and then you're gonna put the balls of your feet on the peg. So, not your toes, like right there. And then stand up. There you go. Knees slightly bent, pinch your legs together, toes in, elbows bent, okay? Right like that. A few moments later. Stand up, stand up! She never listens to me at home either, so I guess, why would she listen to me now?
and Mason are kind of battling back and forth on the track. I don't know how hard Luke is pushing it. He may just be kind of working with him. He may just be kind of like pushing him, passing him, then letting him by. I don't know.
can see it, but Mason slammed into this and then his bike was there and then he ended up over there. Look at Mason's clip right here. Oh, look what he did to his metal loco pants. Right here. I don't need to see all your skin, Mason. Just... And right here. Are you okay, Mason? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. The sad thing is I wasted my footage. I was videoing Lillian, and because of her, I missed her crash. I'm sorry. Uh, apologize to the viewers, Lillian. I'm sorry. Okay, we forgive you. Hey, man. Thanks for your help with Mason. You're yeah, you got it, buddy. Like somebody lost their packing. It's still warm too. Just about done. You want to see something funny? Grant pushing his bike back to the truck in the rain. He's got a long ways to go. He parked way over there. He's got a long, long way to go. Keep going, man. What do you think, Lillian? Was this fun or? It was fun. Is it something you want to keep doing or yeah. not really? Yeah. What bike Dang it. Like I think this bike is a little easier for you to ride, huh? See you guys, bye. The Suzuki is bigger and it feels normal. Before we end this video tonight, guys, I'm gonna show you Mason's chest protector. But before I do that, Mason, uh, he had he had a rough day today, but it, it really could have been a lot worse. He had three crashes that I'm aware of. The first one, he got taken out by Dylan Fernandez. <laughs> The third one, he got squirrely in the whoops, flew off the bike and waterboarded himself in a puddle. And of course, the second one, I didn't see it, but from what I heard and what I gathered from the GoPro, it looks like he kind of slid out, hit the gas, and the bike just shot right into the metal grate on the side of the track. And that was one of the crashes where I've been there before. When, when you see the crash coming and you know it's about to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. The bike went right into the one side of the metal grate and then he flew into the other side of the metal grate. Of course, I don't think that thing should have even been near the track. I think it was way too close. Most tracks, they put hay bales or tough blocks on the side of the track. Here in the Northwest, we put metal grates on the side of the track just to make things interesting. No, I, I went and talked to them, uh, the track. That should not have been there, but you guys, hey, mistakes happen. And I talked to them and they said that they'll fix that and next time that won't be there. But I'm really grateful because that could have been a really bad crash. This is Mason's chest protector that we got for him. I think we spent $200 on it. He wears it under his jersey. It's a little bulky. It doesn't really look the best. But honestly, guys, I think that this saved him a lot of pain. This shoulder pad right here, I think his shoulder went right into the corner of the metal bar. I mean, really that could have been a broken wrist or a broken collarbone. And I believe that his gear and this protection helped to make that crash a lot less painful than it could have been. So just a reminder, when you're riding, do whatever you can, try to make sure you have protective gear because you never know when you're gonna need it. All right, Lillian's bike. I actually just sold 
the SSR. Somebody came and picked it up. If you remember from when we bought it, we paid 800. We wrote it a handful of times. I wrote it twice, I think. Lillian wrote it twice and we sold it for 900. So we got a couple rides out of it and we made a hundred bucks, which is more than a 10% increase, which is much better than your stocks are probably doing right now. So not too bad with that. And this bike, honestly, I kind of feel like we're gonna do the same thing right there. We're going to let Lillian ride it for a month or two and get comfortable. And if she feels like she wants to keep riding, we'll get her something else. Okay, Mason's bike. Here. There it is. All right, so here's what happened with Mason's bike. This is kind of like a Moto Dad fail, and I'm a little embarrassed, because I went through the bike, I cleaned the carburetor twice, I did everything I could think of um, to try to get it to work. Couldn't figure it out. I took it to the mechanic, and he cleaned out the carburetor and cleaned the jets, and he said that the jets were a little blocked, then it fired right up. So that's a little embarrassing for me because I cleaned it myself and I thought they looked good. You could see daylight through the jets, but I guess it's kind of not my fault because I was gonna go down, I went down to the bike shop and I said, okay, I just wanna replace these jets just in case there's an issue. And they said that they looked fine. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I don't need to buy new ones. Took them to Andy. Andy, to be fair, used a sandblaster and, and cleaned them and then it fired right up. So on the plus side, the bike ran good today. There was one point where we couldn't get it started, but I don't know what the issue is there. But as far as I can tell, it seems like the jetting and the carburetor is good right now. So I could look at it as a blessing as I didn't have to spend a lot of money going through the bike, but on the downside, now I feel like an idiot.